Hi guys, welcome to this session in a Microsoft Project. In this module, I want to show you the difference between creating a summary task and indenting tasks yourself. So first of all, let's just add a few tasks and I can show you what I mean. So let's call this develop strategy. So that's going to be my title and then I'm just going to have a couple of tasks. Task A and task B. So normally you would, and then just give these a couple of durations, you would indent these two tasks, highlight it like so, onto the task tab and select indent. And then this picks up this summary task, or what looks like a summary task, picks up the duration. If I change any of these durations, so three days, that will pick that up. Two days, that's still two days. Five days, that picks that up. If I link these two together, I'll just put two in there, that will increment that to eight days, which is great. That's what I want. The problem with doing it like this, though, is you can still click on that duration and type over it, which will make that task go from a an automatic schedule task to a manual schedule task. You'll also see that red underline there and this red line indicating that it's bigger than that. You know, this project is longer than what's now showing there, three days. That would ring alarm bells to me. I can put that back to auto scheduled, which will sort that out. It's a bit more accurate. So manual scheduling is really for when you're just planning and you haven't got any ideas of durations and things like that or start times. But once you're getting close to finalising your plan, you should really be doing automatic scheduling. Um, in older versions of project, you once you did this indent like I've just done there, you could not change that duration that was set in stone. But modern versions, 2010 onwards, now you can, and I think it's a mistake Microsoft's made, to be honest. A summary project task, you get that from the Gantt chart format area, and over here, you've got project summary task. When you click on that, it puts it at the top there, I'll just over type that with project A for example. Now on this one, I cannot type on the duration. So that is how these other ones used to be. Now it's only the top one. Now you can get a project summary task to display on any new project that you create. If you just go into options, if I go file options, and then once you get into project options, go on to the advanced area and then just scroll down and what you've got um, as you're coming down here is different ticky boxes for different features anyhow you can put some of these on and take some of these off but as you come further down you've got um, project summary as an option that you can actually activate on now I've already got it ticked on there but that is not normally on but if you tick it on, every time you create a new project, it will it'll sort of give you that top level there. And it's, the summary is already in place and everything will be already indented underneath that. I'm going to take that off actually on mine. I don't want that on. Click OK to that. So that's just a, a very quick uh, look at the difference between ticking a pro project summary task on or using your indents. Now, in my experience, I've always used the indents and I've ticked that on right at the end just to get a timeline across the top. And sometimes I don't even put it on. It's totally up to you. But that's all I want to talk about in this little video. The difference between indenting tasks and the impact that can have on your, what you think are summary tasks. And then putting a project summary task on, which gives you the overall timeline. And you can't edit that, which is a bit safer. So hopefully it was of use. Thank you for your time. I'll catch you in the next one.